okay so welcome to this lecture on mechanical vibrations and in today's lecture we will going to uh, continue solving some problems related to the last topic that we discussed in chapter number two so here is the problem this figure on the right hand side uh, shows a uniform rigid bar of mass m Okay, so this uh, rigid bar here it has a mass uh, of m is uh, small m uh, and the length is a small l so this is the length that is a small l it is pivoted at one end that is point o and it is carrying a circular disc of mass capital m Uh, right at this point O dash and which has a mass moment of inertia J about its rotational axis so this disc has a mass moment of inertia J about its center that is a rotational uh, axis the circular disc is connected to a spring of stiffness K and a viscous damper of damping constant C as indicated. So it is this disc is connected with the with this spring and with this damper. So we have to derive the equation of motion of the system for small angular displacements of the rigid bar about the pivot point O. And then we have to drive the conditions corresponding to the stable, unstable, and marginally stable behavior of the system. So this problem is related with the concept of uh, the topic of stability that we discussed in the previous lecture and uh, we're going to solve it uh, right now in this lecture. So let us assume that uh, this, uh, this entire assembly is being vibrated with the displacement theta clockwise okay so this theta will be small as we know it this we are dealing with only small uh, displacements so that the system remains linear the you know the, so so the center of mass of this disk uh, will be at length l from point o and the center of mass of this rigid law uh, rigid uh, rod will be at small l by 2 from point o and when this assembly will be uh, you know displaced in, in in a clockwise manner like this this spring will be stretched so it will going to exert a tensile force on the disc and this damper will be compressed so it will going to ex exert a compressive force on the disc right at point o sorry o dash so we're going to draw its deflection curve first of all or the free body diagram we can say uh, so this was the original uh, position of the of the rod and disc assembly and we have given it a small deflection theta and this is how it vibrates so from o and o dash O dash will going to assume a new location here okay this O dash is at the uh, center of mass of this disc so therefore at this point the weight of the disc is acting vertically downward mg and the weight of this link uh, sorry th th this this rigid rod okay which happens to be the link between the disc and the pivot point so the weight of this uh, rigid rod will be small m times g and it will going to act it's, it's at its center of gravity that is l by 2 small l by 2 okay so if this this if this distance is capital l this this larger distance is actually capital l and it is making an angle theta then this distance will be l cos of theta and this distance will be l sin of theta and similarly this distance here if you look at this smaller triangle will be l by 2 sine of theta 
so in order to derive the equation of motion we have to use the Newton's second law okay but before that you have to notice that uh, the moment of inertia of this disk because this entire assembly is rotating about point O so we have to use the parallel axis theorem okay to act to to express the moment of inertia of this disk about point O so the moment of inertia of the disk about its center of gravity that is O dash it is J subscript O dash <coughs> and this has been added that is M times the distance between uh, the two parallel axes that is capital L so capital L square times capital M this is the moment of inertia of the disk about point O which is the pivot point or the point about which the uh, vibration is taking place and similarly for for this rod this rigid rod uh, the moment of inertia about its center of gravity that is <coughs> this L by 2 small l by 2 is 1 by 12 m small l square plus the mass of the rigid rod and the distance square of the distance between the two axes that is an axis that is passing from the center of gravity of the rod and the axis that is passing from this point o so this distance is l by 2 okay this distance is l by 2 so l by 2 is whole square this will give us the moment of inertia of this rigid rod about point O and that will be 1 by 3 ml square so now using Newton's second law in rotation okay. I am taking this uh, clockwise moment to be positive because I have assumed that this uh, vibration is in clockwise manner so I am taking it clockwise positive this will be equal to the sum of the moment of inertias of disk and rod that is this one and this value times theta double dot so we are going to sum the moments about point O of all these forces so first of all we will take this force the weight of the disk mg okay its moment arm about point O is this this value L sine theta and this is actually creating a clockwise moment so it is positive mg times L sine theta then we are going to take the moment of this uh, the weight of the rod that is mg small mg times L by 2 sine theta this distance is L by 2 sine theta okay so it's mg times l by 2 sine theta and this is also clockwise so it is positive then we have the spring force that was tensile and the moment arm of this spring force is l cos of theta and this is anti-clockwise so it is minus minus k okay then this is uh, x l cos of theta And then we have another another force that is the damping force here okay the moment arm is again l cos of theta this distance this vertical distance is l cos of theta and it is again anti-clockwise so it will be negative minus c x dot into l cos of theta will be equal to the sum of the uh, moment of inertias of the disc and the rod times theta double dot so this is the uh, expression for Newton's uh, second law of motion in rotation for this system okay, we have just taken some the we have basically uh, some the moment about point O of all these forces and that is equal to the inertia of the system so here you can notice that because of this geometrical function sine theta appearing and cos theta this differential equation of motion is basically a nonlinear one and we need to convert it into a linear differential equation of motion so we are going to assume 
that the deflections are small and therefore sin theta is approximately equal to theta and cos theta is approximately equal to 1 okay and therefore this equation will be converted into a linear equation so assuming x equals to l theta uh, and x dot equals to l theta dot for small angles sin theta is approximately equal to theta cos theta is approximately equal to 1 the previous equation that was non-linear will become a linear equation like of this form where j naught is still the sum of the moment of inertia of the disc about point O that is the pivot point and the moment of inertia of the rod about point O that is the pivot point so we still have to rearrange this equation okay so rearranging this equation uh, we will get this kind of uh, expression so we have to take all the things on this side all the terms on this side it will become j naught theta double dot plus cl square theta dot and since this term is theta this term is theta and this term is also theta so we can take theta common and we can write in the bracket that kl square uh, and this is plus so it will be minus mgl this is plus so it will be minus mgl by 2 small mgl by 2 equals to 0 and this is our linear equation of motion okay so we can we can say that cl square is equal to the uh, equivalent damping constant ct and kt is equal to kl square minus mgl minus mg small mgl by 2 so we can say that this entire thing is equal to the equivalent stiffness and this entire thing cl square is equal to the equivalent damping so the characteristic equation of this uh, differential equation of motion okay will become in place of theta double dot we can write s square so j naught s square in place of theta dot we can write s so it is ct times s and this constant kl square minus mgl minus small mgl by 2 small l by 2 okay. equals to 0 so the root roots of this characteristic equation will become so this is a this is a quadratic equation this is b and this is c so we have minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a so this is the root and you can see that the solution of this differential equation of motion that is the non-linear homogeneous second order differential equation will depend upon the values of this of the of, of the roots of these roots so you can write few lines about the stability okay you can see here that uh, the system can only be stable if the signs of the coefficient in the characteristic equation are all positive so if this sign is positive that is the sign appearing with ct or associated with this constant ct it comes out to be positive okay so ct is cl squared therefore it will always remain positive no problem with it and the sign of this kt also has to be positive for the stability okay but we know that kt is equal to kl square minus capital mgl minus small mg small l by 2 okay and these two terms that includes the gravity are negative whereas kl square is is positive so this means that uh, the condition for stability for this uh, system is that the product kl square must remain greater than the sum of these gravity terms because if the sum of these gravity terms uh, becomes larger than this product kl square then this sign 
will become negative or this sign will become negative sign in the characteristic equation or in appearing in this equation of motion with the uh, constant of theta coefficient of theta so the condition for the stability of this system is that product of kl square must be larger than the sum of these two gravity terms further if you consider this ct0 in the root if this damping becomes zero then what will be the result the the system will become undamped because there is no damping ct is zero the roots will only be imaginary because there is a negative sign appearing under the radical and the system will become only marginally stable because we know that for the free undamped vibration the system is only marginally stable okay so this is how uh, you will going to uh, solve for the stability of the system you always have to drive the equation of motion first and that equation of motion should be linear so you have to make the necessary assumptions to make it linear as we have done it here and then you will going to observe the coefficients of theta theta dot and theta double dot so all of them should be positive all of them should remain positive so you will going to study the condition for stability okay by looking at the coefficients of theta theta dot and theta double dot so let's move on to the second problem here in this problem the roots are given so they say that if the roots are such that s12 is equal to minus 4 plus minus 5 iota find the characteristic equation okay. natural frequency damping ratio and damp natural frequency of the system so as i told you that uh, the information of the roots are very important and, and by looking at the roots you can tell a lot of things about the system here you can see that the system is stable why because it has a negative rail part and we know that if the if the if the rail part is negative uh, the response will always decay in time and the system will be stable okay and since we can see that the roots are complex they also have some imaginary part okay so this system the response of this system will be oscillating in nature and using the values of this of, of, of the roots we can find all this information the characteristic equation we can find from the characteristic equation we can read the values of inertia of the system stiffness of the system damping of the system and then finally we can find out the values of all these quantities one by one so since the characteristic equation for a second order homogeneous linear differential equation is a quadratic one and if the roots of the quadratic equation are known we can actually work backward to get the characteristic equation so when the roots of the quadratic equation are specified the equation can be found out as follows s square minus alpha plus beta times s plus alpha plus plus alpha times beta equals to zero so this equation one will going to give us the characteristic equation of the system so or in other words you can you can uh, realize that uh, if the roots are given to us so let the let s1 be alpha and s2 be beta and if you know alpha and beta you can find the quadratic equation like this s square minus alpha plus beta times s plus alpha into beta so here alpha is s1 which is minus 4 plus 5 iota and beta is s2 which is minus 4 minus 5 iota and if we put uh, this uh, these values of alpha and beta in equation 1 
okay we can solve this so s square minus times uh, minus 4 plus 5 iota and minus 4 minus 5 iota times s plus minus 4 plus 5 iota into minus 4 minus 5 iota equals to 0 and we know that iota square equals to minus 1 so we can solve these brackets we can solve these brackets uh, to get this equation so this is s square plus 8s plus 16 plus 25 equals to 0 and this gives us the characteristic equation as s square plus 8s plus 41 equals to 0 s square plus 8s plus 41 equals to 0 uh, this means that in this system mass is let's say 1 kilogram because the coefficient of s square is 1 c is 8 newton second per meter because the coefficient of s is c and this 41 represents the value of the stiffness k 41 newton per meter so from the characteristic equation we can find the values of m c and k once you get these values you can find the remaining parameters for example omega n is under root k by m so k is 41 m is 1 therefore the natural frequency is under root 41 which is 6.403 radian per second we also know that the critical damping constant of the system is twice of the product m into omega n and since m is 1 omega n is 6.403 we can find the critical damping constant that is 12.806 newton second per meter once we calculate the critical damping constant we can find out the value of damping ratio zeta therefore zeta is c over cc and c is 8 cc we have calculated to be 12.806 therefore zeta is 0.624 and since this value is less than 1 we came to know that this system is an under dam system so for under dam systems omega d is valid and omega d is under root 1 minus zeta square omega n so you put all the values here 1 minus 0.624 square uh, into 6.403 you get omega d 5.003 radian per second so this is how you calculate the natural frequency the characteristic equation the damping constant and the damp natural frequency so all these things you can calculate if you know the roots of the characteristic equation if you can find out the roots of the characteristic equation okay if they are given to you you can always work backward and you can calculate all these things similarly uh, if you look at this uh, other example as for, for example this the roots are given to be four times sorry four plus minus five iota If you look at the roots, you will see that it has a positive rail part. This root has a positive, positive rail part. And this means that this system will be unstable or it will going to diverge with the passage of time. So this system will going to diverge because it has a positive rail root. And we do not want systems to diverge or you can say that it will be a unstable system so even though the natural frequency will be valid but there there won't be any any damping ratio or damp natural frequency for this this system because it is a diverging system similarly if you can have the roots defined like this minus 4 and minus 4 
so you know that the roots are real and repeated so therefore and they are negative actually so the so the system will will be stable because you have negative roots and both of the roots are same that is minus 4 minus 4 so they are repeated roots therefore the system will be non oscillating okay it will be non oscillating and a non oscillating system is either defined to be the critically damp system or the over damp system okay and both of them are non oscillating and they will going to diminish with time so just by looking at the values of the root you can tell the response okay here again the the root was complex so it will be oscillating oscillating but diverging so we have an oscillating response but it is diverging Here the system is non oscillating because there is no imaginary root here. Okay. There is no imaginary root here, only real repeated roots. So, this is how uh, you solve the problem when the roots are given to you. We are going to move forward to the uh, next problem. Uh, so, this new uh, next problem says that uh, we have to calculate the amount of damping here that is zeta and the figure is given to us this is the response uh, of the system and we can clearly see that this is an under damp response so so the value of zeta that we will going to calculate or the value of damping constant would be less than one the value of zeta because it is an under damp system and the amplitudes are decreasing and we can see that if if, uh, if x1 is the uh, initial amplitude okay then the amplitude after one cycle is x2 and so if, if we are taking this point here then the corresponding point that is one cycle apart will be x2 and we can find the damping logarithmic damping by using this formula x1 upon x2 and we know that this can be related to some function of the uh, zeta and this is how we can calculate the value of zeta and zeta is nothing but the value of damping constant actual damping constant of the system and the critical damping constant so the mass is given to us in this problem and we are required to calculate the value of c the damping constant provided that uh, the time period of the of the damp uh, vibration is two second so the time period of the damp vibration is two second and the amplitude is to be reduced to one fourth in one half cycle okay so so it will going to reduce in one half cycle okay one plus half cycle is uh, 1.5 so uh, they are saying that actually this amplitude which is not one cycle apart x1.5 is actually one fourth of this value x1 and and so this uh, this ratio of one fourth will going to continue for the rest of the response so this means that uh, the ratio of x2 and x1.5 here will also be one fourth and this is how we can find out the value of x2 in terms of x1 because we need to find x1 and we need to find x2 so from this given figure 
we know that x1.5 is 1 by 4th of x1 as as the given condition is here and x2 will be that is this value x2 which is one cycle apart and in in this formula remember that we are taking the amplitudes that are one cycle apart exactly so this x2 will be equal to 1 by 4th of x1.5 where x1.5 is equal to x1 by 4 so x2 will be equal to x1 by 16 and using the value of now x2 and x1 we can find the uh, logarithmic decrement delta so delta comes out to be natural logarithm of x1 upon x2 which is ln of 16 2.7726 this is the log decrement and we know that this can be related to the to some function of zeta like this and from this expression okay so the value of delta is 2.7726 and we can find the value of zeta by solving this expression and so this gives us the value of zeta is 0 0.4037 which is less than 1 which is under damped and looking at this response it was very clear to us in the beginning that the zeta will be less than 1 will come out to be to be less than 1 so now zeta is here then <coughs> We know that zeta is the actual damping constant of the system divided by the critical damping constant and, trick, and the critical damping constant is nothing but the product of 2m and omega n which can also be written as 2 under root km. Okay, so k is not specified in this problem and there is no way we can actually figure out the value of k so we will going to rely on this formula. If somehow we can calculate this omega n we will be in this position to calculate the critical damping constant and thus finally this value of the actual damping constant so using the information of the damp time period because the damp time period is two second and damp time period is given by two pi upon omega d which is the damp natural frequency and we know that the damp natural frequency is omega n into under root 1 minus zeta square zeta is 0 0.4037 2 pi is constant this 2 is the given time period so we can solve for omega n from this expression and omega n comes out to be 3.4338 radian per second so this means that now we can use this value of omega n to calculate cc that is 1373.52 newton second per meter and finally, uh, we use this ratio or the definition of zeta to calculate the actual damping constant present in the system. So the actual damping constant in, in the system is 554.49 Newton second per meter. So this, it was an under damped shock absorber of a motorcycle that was having a mass of 200 kilogram and <clears throat> when it was subjected to a road bump it it begins to oscillate in the vertical direction and this response was then recorded using some sort of a vibration sensor and using the information in this uh, response we are able to calculate the actual damping constant present in the system so this this example this problem is a very good indication of, of the matter of the fact that uh, using the information of logarithmic decrement we can really calculate the estimate the amount of actual damping present in a system experimentally by measuring its response uh, and so this this actually gives us idea this problem gives us idea that suppose we want to research in a in synthesizing a material that has a superior damping ability and and carrying out some some experiments and the synth synthesis procedure we we make made that material we make that material and to calculate or to estimate the amount of damping present in, in this material inherently uh, we can we can basically cast this material in some kind of a you know cantilever beam install it 
uh, install a vibration sensor at, at its free end and you know bring this this cantilever beam in uh, into into free vibration okay so the sensor will going to record this kind of a response and by collecting this information in a in a computer software like matlab we can study the amplitudes and how these amplitudes are decaying so we can really read this value and we can really read this one this value in the matlab and then use this formula of logarithmic decrement to calculate the amount of damping present in the material this uh, is a very practical you know a, a problem and you have to keep uh, noticing that the logarithmic decrement can only be used for under dam cases because under dam cases are are the only cases that can oscillate <coughs> with the damper the other two cases cannot oscillate okay so the definition of logarithmic decrement cannot be utilized for them so we move on to the <coughs> other problem the next problem which says that the maximum permissible recoil distance of a gun is specified as 0.5 meters so this is the maximum permissible recoil distance of a gun so when you fire the gun it actually fires the projectile and then it uh, recoils back and the and the distance that this gun covers the maximum distance that this gun can cover on its recoil is 0.5 meter and they are saying that if the initial recoil velocity so the initial velocity is given to you initial recoil velocity is to be between 8 meter per second and 10 meter per second so you can take some average value of this these two numbers 10 plus 8 18 upon 2 9 meter per second so the so the average initial recoil velocity of the gun is 9 meter per second then we need to find the spring stiffness of the recoil mechanism so so the recoil mechanism consists of a damper and a spring attached in parallel to it okay we need to calculate the spring stiffness what should be the amount of stiffness present in the spring for this recoil mechanism assume that a critically damped dashboard is used and the mass of the gun is 500 kilograms as i already told you when we were studying the damped response cases i i told you that these large guns and missile launching systems and tanks okay mechanical lifts they all are critically damped because you don't want them to oscillate once they they return they return to their initial uh, condition you don't want them to oscillate in time okay. so you can imagine a gun uh, uh, after after when when you use it uh, for uh, to 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 fire a target and then after firing it actually uh, recoils back and then starts to oscillate it will be very difficult to you know use it for the second round so this will be very inconvenient and these kind of guns are usually critically damped so the data given to us is that the initial velocity is given to us so this problem has no initial displacement we can consider the initial displacement to be zero in this problem the maximum recoil distance is given to be 0.5 meters and the initial velocity is given the system is critically damped and the mass is 500 kilograms so we straight away we can say that for critically damped systems the response is given like this because the roots are uh, repeated they are they are negative they are real and they are repeated so for real repeated roots the, the the response if you remember the response of a second order linear homogeneous differential equation was uh, given to be uh, in form of equation one and this x naught and x dot naught are the initial conditions so of course in this response this x naught is zero because the initial displacement is zero 
in this problem. What we can do is that to convert this expression into velocity, we can differentiate this with respect to time. And once we will going to apply the derivative here, that is, if we want to differentiate this equation one with time, we see that this is the function of time. We can call it u. And this is another function of time. We can call it v. So basically, if you want to differentiate this equation one with respect to time, you have to use the u into v formula. And when you use that formula, you get this result. Okay, from this result, and this is x dot now. Okay, so this is x and this is x dot. So from this result, you can, uh, you know, take this e raised to the power minus omega n t common. And when, when you take this common, this equation will going to reduce as equation number two. Okay. And so now we have two equations. And what we need to find out is the recoil, is the spring stiffness. So the spring stiffness, we know that the spring stiffness is related to the natural frequency of the system by the simple formulation as we know it k upon m. Now here in this problem m is already given to you k you need to find out and omega n is not known to you. So the idea is to calculate omega n somehow by using equation 1 and 2. So what we will going to do is that we are going to make use of the conditions here. These conditions that are on the screen right now. We say that at time t equals to tm, at some time t equals to tm, the distance is, is maximum. That is this value, 0.5 meter. And you all know when when a certain thing reaches its maximum displacement or maximum distance, maximum height, the velocity at that point becomes zero. Okay. So since displacement and velocity in vibration are always uh, 90 degree out of phase, if one is, you know, at its highest point, the other one will be uh, at its lowest point or zero. So we, we say that when x equals to x max at t equals to tm, then the velocity will be zero. And initial displacement is already zero for this case. So if we use these conditions in equation number two here, okay, this t will become tm, x naught can be considered as zero, okay. this velocity will become zero and t will become tm okay so x dot naught will remain x dot naught so we say that this t will become tm here okay this x naught will become zero so this equation will reduce to x dot naught minus x dot naught omega n t m equals to zero. And from this expression, uh, we can get the value of t m. So t m is 1 upon omega n. Still omega n is unknown. Uh, so we, we came to know that at t equals to t m, the displacement of the gun is maximum and initial condition is in the initial condition the displacement is zero so whereas tm is equal to 1 over omega n this will be the time uh, at which the maximum recoil will going to take place so now we're going to use equation number one and uh, try to find out From equation number one, uh, you can see that uh, at time t equals to, if we substitute t equals to tm 
in this equation 1. Okay. And we take this x0 0. Uh, this x0 will also be 0. So all we are left with is x dot naught into tm e raised to the power negative omega n tm equals to x max. This will become x max at time t equals to tm. So when we substitute tm equals to 1 over omega n this expression, we can get the value of omega n. This is the value of omega n. Okay. Omega n is equal to x dot naught e raised to the power minus 1 upon x max. Now, x dot naught can be taken as the average of 8 meter per second and 10 meter per second, that is 9 meter per second. e is a constant raised to the power minus 1. x max is given to be 0.5 meters. We can straight away calculate omega n. So, omega n is 6.622 radian per second. And since omega n since omega n is equal to k over m so we have already calculated calculated omega n here m we already know we can find out k that is k equals to m omega n whole square which is 500 times 6.622 whole square and the spring stiffness that we have to use in the recoil mechanism of this gun is calculated to be 21.925 kilo newton per meter now usually if you go and purchase a spring you won't be able to find exactly the same stiffness so what you have to do is that you have to select few springs and use them in series parallel combination until unless you obtain this figure 21.925 kilo newton per meter and this problem uh, actually gives us the idea about how to solve uh, critically damped systems previously in the class we did one problem on uh, the response of under damped system and, and, and this can be considered as an associated problem but this this one utilizes the response of the critically damped systems so we're going to move towards the next problem which is the last problem of this chapter find out the equation of motion critical damping constant and damped natural frequency for the following structure in terms of the given parameters so the parameters are l k c a and m okay so you have to keep in mind that these are the given parameters l which is the length of this rod k which is the stiffness of this spring attached at this location a measured from the pivot point c is the damping constant of this damper Okay, M is the mass that is being suspended at the free end of this rod. Okay, so these are the given parameters and we have to represent all these things that is critical damping, damped natural frequency and equation of motion all in terms of these given parameters. So you have to keep in mind that you cannot you cannot just leave uh, CC as two m omega n. You cannot just write write it like this. This will be considered as wrong because you have to represent CC uh, as a function of all these parameters. So function of all these parameters that are given. Similarly, the damp natural frequency will be represented as a function of all these parameters. If, if somebody write that CC is equal to 2m omega n, this will be wrong. If somebody writes that omega d, the, natural, the, the damp natural frequency is 
वन माइनस जीटा स्क्वायर इन टू ओमेगा एन देन इट विल बी कंसिडर एज रॉन्ग इन दिस प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज यू हैव टू रिप्रेजेंट ओमेगा डी एंड सी सी इन टर्म्स ऑफ दीज पैरामीटर्स नॉट विद देयर स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मूलाज uh so what we will do is it will going to have a deflection diagram i suppose that this uh, entire assembly is vibrating in a clockwise manner with a space variable theta so it's one degree of freedom system only one mass is, is appearing one space coordinate is required to uh, study the entire motion and we will going to use the summation of moment about point o which will be equal to the inertia rotational inertia of the system j not is the uh, moment of inertia of this mass so j not for a mass for a for a point mass okay for a point mass so this is one point where the mass is being attached all the mass is concentrated at one single point uh, which is at the free free end of this rod so for for point mass located at a distance l from the pivot point or from the point of rotation the moment of inertia of such mass is given as the value of the mass m and the square of the distance from the point of rotation so this so the distance is l capital l so therefore l square so j not itself can be expressed in the given parameters that is ml square now this formula is only valid please remember this formula is only valid for a point mass located at a distance l from the point of rotation it is not valid for any other case so this is this is theta this is the deflection curve or the free body diagram you can say so when this rod will going to move downward this spring will be stretched and a tensile force is shown acting away at the point of contact this damper will be compressed and so a compressive force is exerted by this damper at the point of attachment on this rod and both these forces are located at distance a from this pivot point so we find out the moment fs and fd exerts restoring moment on on this structure and these moments are anti clockwise so they will be negative so negative fs times a minus fd times a equals to j not is given by ml square so m l square theta double dot and you can rearrange this expression in 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 form of equation 1 okay but you know that for small theta okay this x that is the deformation of this spring and damper or the displacement of this spring and damper that is x uh, can be written as a times theta for small angular deflections so x equals to a theta and x dot equals to a theta dot this this actually is valid from the small uh, displacement assumption and you also know that fs equals to kx and fd equals to cx dot so we can substitute these results in equation number 1 and we get our answer number 1 that is the equation of motion so this is the equation of motion of this system and you can see that the equation of motion is in in terms of the parameters given so we have m l square theta double dot plus c a square theta dot plus k a square theta equals to 0 so the so the parameters are all there in this equation of motion okay Are you looking at this uh, structure you could have easily uh, you know stated that since this is a 
one degree of freedom system problem okay and a damper is there so it so it is so its equation of motion is actually a second order homogeneous linear differential equation and that is written by you can say mx double dot plus cx dot and plus kx equals to zero this indeed is the equation of motion of the system you can replace uh, you know m by j naught here and x double dot by theta double dot does not matter x dot by theta dot x by theta okay so you can also write this expression as j naught theta double dot plus c theta dot plus k theta equals to zero you can always write this equation in this format as well but again you see that the equation of motion in this case does not include uh, the parameters all the parameters listed here in this figure so this cannot be considered right for this problem even though these equations represents the equation of motion of this structure in general but we cannot consider them right because you haven't actually incorporated the parameters here so as you can see in in this equation of motion that we have derived we can see all the parameters we can see l we can see m we can see a we can see this damping constant and we can see that this spring constant is also there in, in this equation so this is the correct answer that that is required now what we will do is that we will going to uh, we can actually call that c equivalent is equal to c a square and k equivalent is equal to k a square because the coefficient of theta is the k equivalent the coefficient of theta dot is is c equivalent okay and j naught can be written as ml square so we know that the critical damping constant will be equal to 2 under root j naught k equivalent and k equivalent is k a square j naught is ml square so cc can be written in terms of the parameters given in this problem uh, like this so you can take l square and a square common from this uh, from this radical sign you can bring them out of the radical sign and you can represent your critical damping constant in terms of the parameters given in the question that is 2 times a l under root m k the unit if you if you work out the unit of this critical damping constant you will find out that the unit is newton second meter so this damping constant cc in this format that is 2 a l under root m k if you represent uh, this cc in all these in terms of all these parameters then this cc is basically the torsional damping constant this is actually behaving as a torsional damper okay this this value is a torsional damping constant because the unit is newton second meter not newton second per meter and this happens to be our answer too because c's we have calculated cc critical damping and it is in terms of all these parameters so we know that zeta is equal to c upon cc means that this c is now c equivalent okay we, we know that zeta is actually c over cc where this c is the actual damping constant present in the system here it is c a square the coefficient of theta dot is the damping constant c a square which is c equivalent so i am writing zeta equals to c equivalent upon cc so c equivalent is c a square and cc already we have calculated here 2 a l under root m k uh, so therefore zeta comes out to be c a upon 2L under root mk and we know that the damped natural frequency is equal to under root 1 minus zeta square omega n where omega n is this value and this value comes out to be because omega n can be written as
के इक्विवेलेंट अपॉन जे नॉट सो के इक्विवेलेंट इज के ए स्क्वायर जे नॉट इज वॉट एम एल स्क्वायर सो ए अपॉन एल कैन बी ब्रॉड आउट ऑफ द रेडिकल साइन कैन बी रिटर्न आउट ऑफ द रेडिकल साइन एंड यू विल एंड अप विथ ओमेगा एन इक्व टू ए अपॉन एल अंडर रूट के ओवर एम सो दिस इज द नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसी इन टर्म्स ऑफ द पैरामीटर्स अपेयरिंग इन द प्रॉब्लम so using these values of omega n and zeta we can represent omega d in terms of the parameters of the uh, given question and that is a upon l under root k upon m minus c square a square upon 4l square m square and the unit will be 1 uh, upon second So this is the damped natural frequency in terms of the parameters appearing in our given question, and this is our answer number three. Uh, so this pro problem does not actually include any any numerical values, but it showed you how to how to represent these important parameters of any damp system like critical damping constant, damped natural frequency. Uh, the damping ratio zeta and the equation of motion in terms of the available information of the problem the given parameters of the problem and this actually uh, brings us to the end of chapter number 2 uh, in the next lecture we will going to start uh, forced vibration chapter number 3 of your textbook uh, until then go through all these uh, video lectures and we'll going to meet meet again in the next lecture